If a fly loses its wings, would you call it a walk or maybe a crawl? Well, not all questions need answers, but here at Motorcycles Off-Road, we have some answers to questions that you might actually need or want. In this video, we want to discuss the positives and the negatives of having a dual sport motorcycle. Many people don't have the room or maybe not the expendable income to have multiple motorcycles, so one motorcycle that can do it all might be the right motorcycle for them. I've recently made videos on such topics as the best dual sport motorcycles of this year or what used motorcycles you might be interested in buying based on my recommendations, and I get tons of comments below saying, hey, I'm about to buy my first dual sport motorcycle, or which motorcycle do you think best for me i'm this size this height etc but here i want to talk about things that you should know before buying these motorcycles the benefits the drawbacks and lay it all out for you so hopefully this helps some of the new riders get into their dream bike so they can get out there and have some great fun so i really appreciate you clicking on the video and giving me your time so let's just jump into it and get rolling okay so most benefits there is also drawbacks so let's take them out one piece at a time Firstly, let's talk about the price. As far as motorcycles go, dual sport motorcycles are relatively inexpensive. Overall, they won't break the bank. You can pick a brand new motorcycle up from anywhere from five to $7,000. Now, of course, there is high-end KTM, high-performance engines, like they put in those bikes, Husqvarna's, etc., and they're gonna cost a pretty penny. But when it comes to your first dual sport, or when it comes to just being able to do everything and get out there, when you stick with the Japanese Big Four, you really can't go wrong. I went into length in a previously mentioned video about the best dual sports of this year and broke down each one and its benefits and its drawbacks. But one common factor is none of these motorcycles are overly expensive. So even if you're just somebody who's trying to learn motorcycling in general, just to drive on the road, a dual sport motorcycle might be a good choice for you. But that leads us to our first drawback, which is they aren't overly awesome on the road as a whole. What do I mean by that? Well, dual sport motorcycles are basically a modification, a variant, if you will, of a dirt bike counterpart in most cases. So what you're actually getting is a motorcycle with a 21 inch front wheel, an 18 inch rear, and something that usually has a relatively hard seat. Also, because they're off-road oriented, most of them have single cylinder engines, and single cylinder engines are a bit buzzy when maintaining highway speeds for extended periods of time. Without going too far into it though, the single cylinder engine is very beneficial for creating low end power at lower RPMs when dealing with off-road situations. So just like anything else, there's positives and drawbacks even all the way down to the engine. But if you're somebody that's looking for long commutes, maybe a dual sport is not for you. In this situation, you might be interested in two motorcycles, or you might just have to make do. Now, don't get me wrong. If your commute is a nice 20 to 30 minutes of all back roads to countryside, then by all means, dual sport will be amazing. But if you have to spend extended periods of time on the highway, maybe not so much. Back to the benefits. This is a motorcycle that can go anywhere. By go anywhere, I mean these are the most versatile motorcycles. I mean, you can drive them in the field behind your house, you can drive them to work, you can drive them in the city, and you can drive them for a day off-road. No other motorcycle class can really do anything close to this. The only thing you could argue is maybe an adventure bike, which we'll cover a little bit later in the video, because dual sports definitely aren't those. But beyond that, these are the most versatile go anywhere motorcycles you can possibly get. I often find myself out on my motorcycle and seeing little openings in the woods and wondering where they go. Well, on the dual sport, you can just be like, yeah, I'm going to check that out. And you just go there. As long as there's no posted signs, no, no trespassing signs, it's almost like free game, especially where I live. Now that being said, to have the same benefit with a true off-road bike, you would have to cart it there in the back of your pickup truck or your trailer and unload it, then explore, and you might just get, you know, 30 or 40 yards into this area and find out it's just basically a dead end, some cutout area that a hunter made at just one point so he can set up a deer stand. So go anywhere is definitely a benefit. Okay, so I promised we'd talk about adventure bikes and the drawbacks. We did say that a dual sport is not great for long trips. I truly believe, looking at the market, that touring motorcycles for most part are being replaced by bigger adventure motorcycles. Now, what is the advantage? While well, you have a bigger adventure motorcycle, like my T7 here, the Tenere 700 is fully capable off-road, it has power to overtake anyone on the highway, and it's a relatively pleasurable ride on long trips because of its dual cylinder situation, it's not very buzzy, and the motor's kind of relaxing and has a great tone to it. Also, 
Also, one benefit of an adventure motorcycle is having a huge fuel capacity, which allows you to go further between gas stops. So you're probably thinking, well, that sounds great. That sounds like every positive. Why don't I just get an adventure motorcycle? Well, not so fast. Most of us mere mortals cannot do the same things that you could do on a dual sport as an adventure bike. You're generally not hitting single trail, carving tight turns, rocky climbs with this type of motorcycle. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying it's a lot harder. Big sacrifice here to get all those benefits of the adventure motorcycle would be its weight. Weight is a huge factor when generally adventure bikes come in 50% heavier or more than your dual sport counterpart. I personally cannot achieve the same results as I do on my dual sport that I can with my adventure bike. But back to the benefit side, you can drive trail to trail because dual sports have legality. And also if you're brave enough, you can drive all the way to the trail. I personally don't usually do this. And the reason being is if you have a malfunction on your dual sport in the trail, then a lot of times you have problems. But if you're not too far from home and if you have a good system of friends that go with you, you won't have any problem doing that either. It's just a lot of places I like to ride are a couple hours away. I unload and then I ride for the entire day, a lot of times connecting trails by road, which is completely fine. And that's a huge benefit of a dual sport. And like me and many other people, a lot of the roads around us are basically off road, whereas they're gravel or haven't been paved or they're in a state forest and the one thing they ask is that you have an actual legal motorcycle with a spark arrestor headlights etc for the other drivers on the road if you actually ever see them for me i can go a full eight hour day trip and not see anyone but if the forest ranger happens to drive by i'm completely safe altogether but if we want to talk about a drawback to that a dual sport's never going to be as good off-road as a dirt bike dirt bikes are the supreme off-road kings they're lighter they make more power they don't have to worry about these silly things like spark arresters because they're generally made for closed courses. If you're really, really into going off-road and you like to go to off-road parks, not just motocross tracks, like parks where you can pay for the day and just drive on the off-road trails all day long, maybe a dirt bike's better for you. Boards offer more versatility, but the dirt bike definitely has more capability. Now, if we just want to take one step back and we want to overall compare an adventure bike, a dirt bike, and a dual sport together, keep in mind a dirt bike is on one very side of the spectrum in which you're not going to really want to do too much road, gummy tires, maybe your tires aren't even balanced, quick service intervals, where the dual sport has long service intervals, pretty good on a road, legal, not as good off road, and then we move to adventure bikes, which is on the far other side of the spectrum, which is more light road-esque still also has long service intervals but much heavier than its dual sport and dirt bike counterparts so which one you decide to go for really depends on your use scenario and i find a lot of people buy a motorcycle thinking they're going to do something and they're not truly honest with their self what they're actually going to use it for so sometimes you just have to buy one see what you actually like to do and then resell it if it's not for you that's completely fine everybody deserves the right to be happy especially when they're spending their expendable hard-earned cash they sacrifice for. Now me personally, I budgeted pretty well and I have an adventure motorcycle, I have a dual sport motorcycle, and then I have a street legal dirt bike motorcycle. All three of these sit in my garage and fill a different niche for the day type of ride in which I would like to do. And I understand not everybody can do this, but I just love motorcycles so much that I've come to that conclusion that that's just me. So what do you guys think? Is a dual sport motorcycle right for you? Is an adventure bike right? Or maybe you'll just settle for a dirt bike. Let me know in the comments below and I hope that you found some information and found this video to be a little bit informative. Be sure to check out the Patreon if you want double the content. And also, stay safe, guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Andrew, and this is Motorcycles Off Road.